Hello friends. Now let's start with our stress analysis course. Uh, this entire uh, series of lectures which we are going to have on uh, uh, like a web recording. Now for the details of the course, please go and refer to the link which I have given below or my YouTube videos. The first module which we are going to have here is the very important concepts of stress analysis. So what we are going to learn into this. Now when you wake up in the morning in a normal routine life, you are not stressed, you are waking up, brushing your teeth, taking a bath, that's fine. But you go out of the house and you come to know that you are late, you have missed a train or a bus and you want to reach to your office within say particular time and you want to punch in and suddenly you find that there is a signal. These kind of situations are unexpected which you don't want to hold for a long. So that could be a stressful situation. So I am watching a football match and a penalty shootout is going on. Even though I am not on the ground, I can feel stress. Let's come back to basic. What do you mean by stress? Now here I just would like to give you, uh, uh, you know, I would like to take you back. Now if you check any material, you know that it is made up of atoms and molecules. If you try breaking this into small, small, small pieces, you will end up with something called as a lattice structure. Now what is lattice structure? This is what you can see on your screen. Now how the atoms are being placed, that is very much important. The books even give the definition of stress is force upon area. That is perfectly right. But what I believe is you are supposed to imagine the stress. You should be able to experience. Before going forward, now what minimum we should know? Now, now uh, we have to go in a little bit depth. You should know what do you mean by scalar, vector, tensor. If you want to become a real good stress engineer. Scalar is something which has only magnitude, no directions. Example length. If this is say 10 cm long, I can say 10 cm from here to here or here to here. Right? Vector has got magnitude as well as directions. It means that if I am applying a force on this object and if I ask you a question whether it is going to elongate or it is going to get compressed, you cannot tell me unless and until I tell you if I am pulling it or I am pushing it. So the direction is also important. Now the vector, so the force is vector. So if I say there is a force of 10 magnitude, if this is my fixed point in minus x direction, then you will come to know the magnitude as well as direction. Then what is the tensor? So in first case, I wanted to give a information that the force is acting in three times x, four times y. And this is called as a rank one vector. Now here, it's a continuous process. And hence it becomes very difficult to have this approach. So what we do, we don't go with this approach we consider the second stage strain is delta L1 plus delta L2 over L. It means what? It means we are considering the length as constant, the original length L. Typically what is going to happen in this? After certain amount of uh, force, there will be a neck formation, right? There uh, just take any uh, object having forces in various directions. Now we want to study this. Now definitely there could be some deformation. So what we do is that we try to you know mesh this and we want to take a very tiny part of this. And this tiny part is taken or considered as a cube. Now I am getting, it's very difficult to analyze the forces in all the directions at a time. So what we are going to do is that we are going to consider three main axes 
exactly in a similar way the stress analysis is going to work what we have done we have tested lot many materials and their combinations of their ingredients in the lab and such a kind of tables are already made for example uh you can check uh, here basic allowable stresses this is a reference from table number a1 the state of stress very important very important question i would like to ask i just would like to go to uh, probably here also i can explain now uh, here you can see i do have a longitudinal stress here axis and if i ask you the second question which is the radial axis and which is the circumferential axis for this pipe radial that answer also you will get in the subsequent slides so at present i am looking from top of this pipe so this is what you can see here is nothing but the symbol of i so i am looking from top and now what i can see is that the longitudinal and circumferential now here if you want to really have a real state of stress you have to define the stress is acting on all the surfaces and that is the real state of stress but for simplicity this 3d cube is being now uh, if i ask you a question uh, very simple but tricky question i take the same specimen and now i am applying a force and if i ask you which kind of stress is present here now there is a opposite reaction now the most obvious answer is the tensile stress is present absolutely right there is nothing wrong in that okay the tensile stress is present but uh, i just change the color of pain is it like this object is having only one plane it's all about if you take any object if you try to pull it along its length it will increase it will elongate but along its diameter it will squeeze a bit so it is a ratio of the lateral strain that is the change in the diameter over original diameter to the change in linear strain that is change in the linear dimension to your original dimension and that is this poisson's ratio or poisson's ratio now this is constant and it's a material property and do you remember have you used this ratio anywhere in so if you observe anything at site which has been displaced from its original position then there must be some force which has caused this displacement and if you are finding the continuous displacements and that is nothing but the vibration then there must be some imbalance force acting on the system it could be a force which is being excited with some external excitation continuously and we do the harmonic analysis for that or there could be a force now uh, do you remember uh, in the oral examination of our undergraduate level there was a common question whether the longitudinal stress is half of hoop stress or twice of hoop stress now the question is bending stress is it a principal stress does it fall under a category of either longitudinal or circumferential or shear next is e e is nothing but the modulus of elasticity um, now you may say me if i ask you a question what is modulus of elasticity you will say straight away the stress is in proportion to strain and that's why this constant of uh, uh, proportionality is called as e uh, that's fine fair answer means uh, you'll get full marks for that but uh, have you understood what e tells you what is the significance of e take the same example the same diameter 10.75 pipe thickness is 0.5 inches it is acted upon by a force of 300 pound and torsional moment of 100 pound feet so we are talking only about the stresses acting here so what you are supposed to calculate you are supposed to calculate the bending stress because of this force and torsional stress because of this torsional moment right so pause the video here put some efforts put some time and try to find out this answer okay we are ending it here as a today's session 
i will be continuing this session wherein we will be talking what will happen when all of them comes together and what is the mode of failure or how we are going to combine them all those stuff thank you for your patient listening i hope you enjoyed the lecture thanks a lot